beast. I can't see very good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so let me go then back. I'm very happy that you are interested, to be honest. Uh, it is interesting. Okay. Yes, as I told you, like um, uh, oral surgery, it's not very okay. um, widely treated in, uh, during uh, formation. So it's, it's very interesting for us to have like a systematic of the thing. Very nice. I'm very happy. So then let's go back again to the, um, as I said, uh, to the surgical part, which is a, with the piezo surgery. Okay, let's look here what it shows us. So this is the, uh, we said we have to remove a part of the bone, isn't it, to access the tooth? Uh, I just don't see myself, but you see, you can see me, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. It's going. Okay, great. So this is what he is trying now to remove from the bone. I'm just making it a little bit further. Okay. Okay, there is Mario is missing, I'm admitting him. Okay, so this is all used by a piezo surgery. And really, the, as we mentioned earlier, as we can see, there is not that much uh, blood as well. Now we will see the tooth, and we will think that it is very easy to extract it right now. But now if you will look what the surgeon is doing, uh, again, it will be stuck and we will have to again remove uh, from the, you know, the bone from around the tooth. So see again, he's going to posterior area uh, to remove a little bit more from the bone. You are right, Doctor Sopanaro. It takes a long time, but I'm making. It <laughs> I'm making. Yeah, but it's very, it's very clean. Uh, actually, it's very um, clean surgical side with no blood, no debris from yes. this. And uh, the healing process, it's also better That's compared right. to the to the standard technique. But, but yeah, it takes a lot of time. <laughs> and the problem is that they it, they don't have a, any rotate rotating burrs. Yeah. So you all. You always have to work with a with a sew, a kind of sew. True. But I've heard I've heard they are making like some r sort of rotating tips, and they're planning to to introduce them. You see how much it's very popular. To, to remove from the bone around, because still it's not possible. And mm. I think that even if you go, if I will go a little bit further, they will have to cut even from the uh, two side as well. Uh, you know, to extract, you see, just a little bit, uh, they cut yeah. a part of the crown, one of the techniques that we have um, mentioned earlier, and only after that, they can go for the extraction. And then the suturing process, I don't think it's uh, something new, so you can, uh, I will not stop there. Uh, now, uh, I believe that every surgeon or every doctor is very important, uh, is very, you know, interested in what will happen later on if his patient will have postoperative, uh, you know, complications or no. So due to that, this is also a very important topic uh, as per me. So I decided to highlight it. Uh, we definitely have some of the, uh, you know, complications which might happen during the surgery and it might even arrive uh, after the surgery as well. If, we, if I will highlight some of them, uh, you can see here a nerve injury, hematoma, edema, fracture of the mandible even might happen and um, a broken instruments can be there many, many other things, and even dislocation of the TMG. You have seen that I have uh, mentioned a lot there. And how to prevent it? Actually, the prevention of complication is, uh, you know, best accomplished by a thorough preoperative assessment. So as I said, first of all, you need to identify what are you going to do? And uh, only after that, go to the, uh, proceed with the surgery. Uh, now, I would like to just, uh, you know, I don't know how it is in your country, uh, but uh, many of young doctors, they don't like to refer the patients. This is very bad, unfortunately. Uh, and, um, but uh, one of the prevention is referral the patient to a specialist who is maybe better in this area uh, than you. Uh, also, you know that we might have sometimes the artifacts and uh, that's why we need to obtain an adequate images and review them properly. So do, if you see such uh, cases in our radiology in your uh, clinics, definitely do not start any procedure. Because you can see at the second picture, it looks like it is fractured, for example, but it is an artifact, for example. And uh, I have mentioned that PPE, per, uh, personal protective equipment, is very important. 
but also we need to follow, you know, the asepsis, a traumatic handling of the tissues, uh, hemostasis is very important, and the debridement of the wound after the surgical extraction is also very important. Now, if we go to the soft tissue injuries, uh, it is actually the result of surgeon, and uh, because he has a lack of, um, I'm sorry, it just out. Okay, uh, lack of adequate attention to the delicate nature of the mucosa. Because, you know, when you're doing surgery, your full mind have to be there. But some of our uh, doctors, they do not that, do that. Then we might have a tear of a mucosal flap. This is a very common uh, soft tissue injury, to be honest, during the surgical extraction. And the cause here will be an inadequate sized envelope flap. So definitely, uh, I think this happens only in the beginning of the carrier when we try to go for a smaller flap. But with an experience, we go for a wider, you know, uh, to, um, because we already know the anatomy and, you know, the areas very clear. Then how can we prevent it? So we need to create an adequate uh, size flap, of course, and we need to use an adequate uh, amount of retraction force. And of course, creating releasing incision when it is indicated. So if I feel it's very small, I will have to make it wider for sure. We might also have a puncture wound. Uh, this happens uh, as a result of the use of uncontrolled force again, uh, because sometimes we think that if we will give more force, it will come out uh, faster, which is not true to be honest, because it's mostly technique, not the, the force. And uh, you have to pay special attention giving for using finger rest or support uh, from the opposite hand in anticipation of slippage. So always give a support with your other hand. Okay, uh, there might be a stretch or abrasion. Uh, this is a result of metal retractor. Mostly when we retract that area, this will happen. Also, when we are using the surgical uh, shank with the burr, we can also have this kind of uh, complication. How we will treat it? So honestly, it should heal by fourth or seventh day by itself. We need to just, you know, inform our patient about what happened. And we also have to tell him that to keep that area clean, a regular oral rinsing will be perfect. But if it develops on the skin, then we will have to cover it with antibiotic ointment. But mostly it will not happen, you know, on the skin. Also what is uh, happening, there might be complication with the tooth being extracted. Uh, so, um, Prevention of root and displacement fracture, so sometimes it might fracture. So you have to always plan for a root fracture. So we already know what are the things that will make our surgery much more difficult. So if I know that, I will have to go for a surgery, right, and plan it accordingly. Uh, so again, we will have to go for surgical extra extraction rather than, sim rather than simple one. And do not use strong apical force on a broken root. Uh, this is the important part because, uh, you know, uh, mostly it happens with the dentist and uh, it can happen with a surgeon as well, of course, but sometimes we might have that uh, the tooth is lost in maxillary sinus. This is a very uh, bad complication that might happen. So first of all, what you need to do, you need to definitely to stop the procedure, identify the size of the root which is lost in the, into the sinus. And then you should assess whether there has been any infection of the tooth or, or periapical tissues. Also, you need to know what was the pre-operative, uh, you know, condition of maxillary sinus. Uh, this is an important part. Uh, we have a nose blowing test, which is helpful uh, to find out if the patient has uh, uh, oral communication or no. Uh, you can see on this X-ray, for example, uh, in some of it, in the second picture, it's very clear. Uh, I have highlighted that, that there is a broken root, for example, which is in the sinus. So if we have oral com uh, communication, actually it is identified very easily by the dentist or oral surgeon, because the periapical curate that we are using will enter much more greater depth than the normal uh, during the debridement. So uh, it will clearly explain to you that, okay, it is going to the maxillary sinus now. And um, what you have to advise your patient in case if there is oral trial communication, so no one can avoid it, but at least we have to know how to deal with it. So first of all, you need to advise your patient to avoid uh, blowing the nose, uh, violent sneezing should not be there. Uh, they should not use the straws, you know, uh, while drinking. And of course, they should avoid uh, smoking, you know, because there will be a negative pressure as well. 
uh, how will be, we will treat it? So actually, if it is a small sized oral trial communication, then the suturing of the gingiva with a figure of eight will be pretty enough. Um, the, even the antibiotic is not necessarily to be there. But if communication is remained open for 15 days or longer, then we have to go for a flap closure, a flap procedure, and we might use the buckle, uh, you know already the anatomy, so you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, buckle, palatal, and breech flaps can be helpful in closing this uh, uh, sinus. Uh, what if the patient will just swallow or if the tooth will be lost in oropharynx? This is very bad, honestly, and um, it might be even aspirated there. So immediately transport your patient, of course, to the emergency. This is first of all, the, all the x-rays of abdominal uh, you know, and chest area should be taken. And then you can remove the tooth with a bronchoscope. Uh, and supplemental oxygen might uh, be needed you know, because of the airways are blocked. Um, again, what can happen to the adjacent tooth during the extraction? So sometimes you, um, uh, you should inform your patient. For example, if the patient is already having a mobile tooth which is adjacent to the surgical one, so we have to inform them that, look, we might uh, need to extract it as well, or it might be luxated by fault because, you know, you are giving a pressure there or a force. Uh, there might be also a fracture of adjacent restoration. So uh, I believe that it is very important, you know, to identify the full oral cavity. If there is a restoration in the adjacent tooth, I immediately inform my patient that, see, it might be gone. And due to that, uh, be aware of it. And extraction, sometimes this also, believe me, happens, extraction of a wrong teeth. But I don't know how the surgeon have to be, you know, <laughs> not serious about it. Okay, uh, how we will prevent it? So you have to recognize the potential to fracture uh, large restorations. You have, as I said already, you have to warn your patient that this might happen. You should use the elevators and all the instruments and force in a proper way. And also you, there is uh, help from your assistant because he will always warn you that, um, you know, you are giving a pressure on the adjacent tooth, so stop, please, don't do that. Uh, a more important, more serious one is injuries to the osseous structures. You can see uh, the pictures here. Uh, you should not, again, use the excessive force, as I said, and please go for the surgical extraction uh, to reduce the force that is required. Um, so, but if it will happen, what we will do? Because again, I'm uh, saying that we cannot, you know, prevent all the complications. Uh, so we will have to, if it is small, first of all, then it will be removed with a forceps. That's very clear. And then the area have to be irrigated with saline solution, just, you know, to make sure that it is clean and the wound have to be sutured. But if the broken part is still attached uh, to the overlying soft tissues, then it may remain after stabilization and suturing of the uh, mucoperiosteum. If we will have a fracture of maxillary tuberosity, and I know that you are looking at this picture very surprisingly, but this happens, honestly, I have uh, seen many of this kind of cases referred to us. So uh, weakening of the bone of the maxillary tuberosity. Uh, it might be because the tooth is ankylosed. Um, so what we will do with it? Uh, I have wrote here everything, so in case if you will need to revise this part. So if it is still attached to the periosteum, then you will need to dissect and remove the tooth tuberosity. Is then will be uh, you know stabilized with the sutures. But if the tuberosity is excessively mobile uh, and you cannot dissect actually from the tooth, then you have two options. So one of the options will be, uh, you know, uh, you have to splint it for three to four weeks, the tooth being extracted to adjacent teeth. And you will have to delay your surgery for up to, you know, six or eight weeks. Uh, you know what will happen at that time because the, the bone will heal actually. Uh, the second option is uh, to section the crown of the tooth from the roots and it will allow the tuberosity and tooth root section to heal. Uh, if we will be very honest, practically it doesn't look so easy as it is uh, written there. But once it's deattached, uh, this is the another part, so then you will have to smooth the bone area, the uh, bone edges and of course suture it. Uh, I don't think I really need to stop on fracture of the mandible because especially in oral maxillofacial surgery, you know how to deal with this kind of uh, complication. The reason here will be, of course, the, the excessive force again. And um, uh, also it might be because, you know, the age, 
the bone and if there is any pathologic uh, lesions there or something like this. And of course we know what is osteosynthesis, so this is what we will have to do about it. Um, now I have highlighted from the beginning that we might have uh, the injury to inferior alveolar nerve. Uh, the cause here can be excessive extraction force in case of curved roots. You remember that's why I said that this is also complicating our surgery, the curved roots. And sectioning the tooth all the way inferiorly. This is what many people like to do, which is not correct. It's better if you will help yourself by elevator later on. Okay. Um, of course, we know how to prevent it. Uh, controlled force will be very important. Proper exposure and proper bone removal there will help you a lot. And definitely careful sectioning will be helpful here. Uh, you can see on the second picture uh, that the surgeon went uh, very inferiorly and due to that, he has injured uh, the nerve there. So um, that's why we have to be very careful about this. Uh, this is the injury for the, uh, okay, we have also the injury to the TMG. So this might happen because of inadequate support during the extraction, uh, uncontrolled force again. So you see the whole problem is an uncontrolled force as you, I mentioned many times. So the treatment here will be the rest of the job. Diet should be there for the patient. Diet means the patient should know what he will eat. He should not give excessive force to his jaw and um, use uh, ibuprofen. It can be used as well if the patient has a pain and etc. cetera. Um, as a surgery, what can happen during the surgery? The instrumental breakage immediately. Uh, first of all, we need to understand what it can be. It can be needles. It can be a burst as well. Uh, we have to immediately stop the intervention. This is the first part because uh, some people they think, or some specialists, they think that um, I will extract the tooth and later on I will take out the instrument, which is broken. This is not true at all. Uh, I do believe that it can go even to the you know, to a more deeper areas. So do not uh, take this risk. Um, you need to take the radiograph to localize the instrument. And you need to inform the patient uh, regarding what happens. So this is very important because uh, um, you, the patient might see that you are panicking, uh, you know, because if this happens immediately, you will ask your patient, uh, put the light more, I don't know, where is it, and etc. So just inform your patient. You see, there is a broken uh, part of the instrument. Don't worry, we are going to take it out. And then you can prescribe the analgesics, um, antibiotics, if the area was already, you know, uh, infected. And then you might delay the surgery for three weeks in case if you couldn't remove that. Okay, uh, this is how it looks like. You can see on the last picture here, a small uh, broken instrument is there. Uh, this is one of the examples. Uh, there might be dislocation of the TMG. Uh, this is the problem because when we are doing the surgery, we are very excited, you know, and then we forget about the time that we use for the surgery. So due to that, avoid lengthy surgical procedures. So if you need to section the tooth, please section it from the beginning. But if you know that it is a very deep impaction and the surgery is going to be difficult, um, I do believe that you have to give a rest for your patient. You can always put, a, you know, a gauze in that area, give a, a rest to your patient, because you know that there might be dislocation of TMG, and then continue the procedure, no worries. So there might be unilateral and bilateral dislocation, uh, maybe in oral maxillofacial surgery you had it. Uh, then the treatment here, I believe that you know already, so the thumbs should be placed on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth, while the rest of the fingers surrounding the body of the mandibular right and left. So you have to be sure that you are very careful about this procedure, because you know, once they close their mouth, it is with a lot of force. So be careful about your fingers. And uh, pressure is then exerted downwards with the thumbs and simultaneously upwards and posteriorly with the rest of fingers until the condal is replaced in its origin uh, position. I'm, I was very worried about the timing due to that. I have kept the YouTube uh, link there. So if you, will, uh, if you would like to see it, uh, you can uh, click on it later. Uh, so one of the post-operative, uh, if you are tired, don't worry. I don't have much slides left. Uh, so we have here uh, trismus, which might happen. Uh, and you know what is the trismus? This is the spasm, which might be a result of injury of the medical pterygoid muscle uh, caused by a needle. It can be, uh, it can be by a trauma or inflammation of the post-extraction wound. 
Okay, so the treatment here will be a heat therapy uh, and hot compress are placed extra orally for approximately 20 minutes every hour until the symptoms will subside. Uh, you can give, uh, prescribe for a patient a gentle massa massage of that area. This will also be very helpful. Analgesics, since the patient might be in pain, anti-inflammatory and muscle relaxant uh, medication might be helpful here. Uh, physiotherapy, you know, uh, in Azerbaijan personally, we do like physiotherapy. Uh, so you can also, um, uh, you know, advise your patient for that. Uh, in case if the patient will have hematoma, as you can see, uh, don't be worried, it might happen to anyone. This is due to prolonged capillary hemorrhage. This is uh, what you have to know. And you will have to place your no cold packs extra orally, uh, especially formulated during the first 24 hours. And then you can go for the heat therapy and analgesics in case if your patient is in pain. But this is how looks the ecchymosis. I think you already know it. And the edema also might happen. So uh, you have to inform your patient that after the surgery, there might be swelling. Don't worry about it. It will be reduced, uh, you know, by time. Uh, it will take a little bit time, you know. Uh, I think, I'm not sure if this is the last, but uh, post-extraction granuloma is very important because, um, you know, many of the young uh, specialists, they do, uh, you know, care about what is this? Sometimes the patient will come back after four to five days and they will see uh, such type of granuloma. So just for your information, this is in case if there is, a, you know, if there is a present of foreign body in the alveolus, uh, this foreign body will irritate the area so that post-extraction healing ceases and there is a separation of the wound. So the treatment here will be very easy. Uh, the breathment of the alveolus and removal of every causative agent. So uh, I believe that here you can also go for the radiology for the X-ray to understand what can be, uh, you know, the uh, foreign body there. Mostly it is because after the surgery, some of the, uh, you know, specialists, they do not irrigate the area. They do not check if um, it is clean or no. Uh, so this is the reason. Uh, also painful post-extraction socket. Uh, this is, uh, can happen immediately after the anesthetic wears off. The patient will start to feel it. Um, analgesics can be prescribed. Uh, I believe that uh, post-operative bleeding, you do really know how to deal with it. But uh, just to, uh, as a reminder, you need to obtain a history of bleeding. So what is actually the reason uh, before treating it? And you have to use a traumatic surgical technique and obtain a good hemostasis at surgery and provide excellent patient instruction for sure. So what they have to do and what they should not do. Uh, those are the local measures that can be done in the clinic. It is uh, mentioned here. Those are some of topic uh, hemostatic agents that uh, should be available in the clinics, especially in dental clinics. Um, and the infection, we know what can be the cause. It might be a trauma, surgery of inflamed tissue. Um, if the patient has already some other problems, hematoma formation, for example. So you have to irrigate the area. Sometimes you need to prescribe the antibiotics for your patients. Um, if there is a need, you will have to go for the incision and drain, drainage of that area. Okay, uh, and dry socket, I think um, mostly the dentists know about that, uh, which is also called as alveolar ostitis. So it occurs actually, the patient will come back to you after three days. So you will think why there is a pain actually. Uh, so this will be called dry socket and it will be painful. The patient will not be able to eat at all. And you will see that there is exposed bone where the blood clot has broken down. So there was no blood at the time of, you know, after the extraction, when you were sending your patient back, you did not check if there was a blood or no. Okay, and I think from the name itself, it's very clear that dry socket, so it's dry, there was nothing, right? And um, the cause here might be a trauma, smoking, and also the poor blood supply. So if you see, we see that there is no blood, we have to initiate that blood after the extraction itself, right? Um, as I said already, this is the clinical presentation, so I will not stop here. Uh, what will be the management? So don't worry if this happens to you. You just need to, uh, you know, uh, under local anesthesia to irrigate that area with the saline. You have to remove all the necrotic debris from there and remove the old clots. This is very important. You should place a dressing there 
uh, socket dressing, which will include, uh, you know, both anesthetic and analgesic. Uh, it can be original. Um, and then you will have to uh, call your, recall your patients after 24 to 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So first one can be by, you know, by call. You can ask how is your patient. Uh, also, you can ask your patient to come and to check on him after 48 hours. We mostly use alveo gel. <laughs> and um, I, I have written there the composition, uh, composition of that uh, uh, alveo gel. Uh, there might be also necrosis of the mucous membrane, and uh, this is the causes. Uh, palatal injury under the excessive force, poor flap design is uh, also one of the reasons. Uh, it might be systematic disorders, and here we will have to manage it uh, by the debridement of necrotic areas. Um, I do believe uh, that many of you already know about this reference book, which is, um, you know, Patterson. It is the favorite for all uh, maxillofacial surgeons. And um, if in case you will be interested to contact me for the questions or something, you can find me uh, through Dr. Sapanaro. Uh, you can mail me, you can uh, have my Instagram or Facebook. And I'm very thankful for giving me this opportunity. I hope it was, um, you know, a uh, useful lecture for you as well. Thank you very much, Sabrin, for coming here today. Um, does anybody have? Do we have time for question, or maybe we can just mail them to you? It's up to you. Um, I mean, I think it's... You know the reason. <laughs> yes, there is. Okay, so in case uh, uh, we they they anybody has question, we they can mail it them to me, and I'm I will contact you or directly to you. It's okay. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for your time. Thanks to Grazie, you. Grazie, Sabri. Grazie. <laughs> bye bye. bye. Bye, thank you.